Beautiful. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to Hello. Anderton's TV. Hello. Nice and to be here. Ben is here, which means, of course, it must be Acoustic Paradiso Day. Um, and today, Ben, we oh. are deep diving into some of the latest technological advantages uh, that are available to gigging acoustic guitar players today, uh, namely the LR Bags Tone Print. Which yeah. is new, right? It is, yeah, the voice print DI. Voice print, voice not print. tone print. It's That's right. someone else's invention. <laughs> <laughs> the voice print DI, yeah, so it's, uh, it's another pedal that kind of explores the world of impulse responses. Impulse responses. So yeah. let's just do a timeline of how you might, over the ages, have uh, played live with an acoustic guitar. Yes. It's kind of a live thing, isn't it? Really? Very More much than so. a recording thing. Yeah. So, um, I suppose many moons ago, uh, when PAs and microphones were just invented, yeah. if the acoustic guitar itself wasn't loud enough for the gig that you were doing, you'd buy a microphone and you'd stick it in front of it and That's off it. you would go. And then at some point, I suspect in the 60s or 70s, some clever dick went, I know what we can do. We can fit microphones and preamps and things inside the guitars. That's it. Well, you had the de Armand, like sound hole pickups were the first ones, like magnetic electric guitar pickups. And then um, the kind of transducer style, like, like the, the oh, old Barcus, Barcus Berries. Berries. Yes. Yeah, Barcus yeah, Berries, yeah, yeah. which, you know, always fell off in my experience. But the, so, so I guess, but the most common one mm. uh, became the piezo style uh, yeah. pickup, which is a little pickup that sits typically under the saddle of your acoustic guitar, works off of the vibrations that go through. And that I suspect is probably in 99% of electroacoustic guitars. Yeah, that's ever. the kind of thing. I think that started with Baldwin and Ovation, made it really popular in the 70s. Oh, so much. <laughs> but um, it's that kind of thing. Yeah, the piezo classic. But what sound. don't we like as guitar players, or you specifically, <laughs> yes. what is the common criticism of that piezo style pickup for live? The ch I mean, they, they generally don't sound very much like an acoustic guitar because they're right under the saddle. All you're getting is the kind of the string rather than any of the body and, and you know the top particularly, which is what makes the sound of an acoustic guitar an acoustic guitar. Yeah. So, so I guess, you know, different brands, and we, we've chosen Cole Clark, they're one of the, the, the most respected uh, acoustic manufacturers with regards to making uh, amazing electroacoustic systems. So I suppose, you know, people have dabbled with um, mixing, blending piezos with transducers yeah. and uh, even putting little microphones inside mm -hmm. the acoustic guitars, but, any good uh, studio engineer will tell you that still the best, best sound that you can get from your acoustic guitar is to use a decent microphone to mic it up. Yeah. And that's where the clever people at Audio Sprockets came up with this invention actually a few years back, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, using impulse responses. So the idea being is that in the studio, you can use your favorite microphone onto your guitar, capture that kind of impulse yeah. response, and then when you go out live, you plug the piezo pickup of your guitar into the audio sprockets, uh, the tone dexter, sorry, out into the PA, and yeah. then it sort of embellishes your piezo sound with an impulse response of your favorite microphone. Yeah, they kind of, um, they work, it, it's really clever. They both work on a kind of similar principle, basically, which is, when you're you're setting up, which we'll see in a minute, you plug your pickup in so that they can both read what your pickup is putting out, compare it to the microphone, and then in theory you can kind of blend in the difference. So you're adding that kind of microphonic microphone sound yeah. to your pickup signal, which is you know clever. So that's clever thing. very niche. I don't believe Audio Sprockets uh, have a big catalogue of products. I suspect you know I think the Tone Dexter is certainly the only one that we stock by them. I think it's now. It. More recently, LR Bags, who have a, a vast heritage in making um, pickups and preamp systems for acoustic guitars, have introduced their version called the Voice Print. And the idea with Voice Print, as with many modern manufacturers, they've tried to integrate the idea of an app on a phone mm. with their <clears throat> um, pedal. So what happens now with the Voice Print is we're actually going to use the microphone that's built into an iPhone rather than a standalone microphone to capture the impulse response of the yeah. acoustic guitar. Um, LR Bags also say if you want to use an external um, iPhone interface with a different microphone plugged into it, then you can, but we were sort of going, kind of seems to defeat the object of the, kind of, the, the cleverness, if you like this. Yeah. So we're in this demonstration, and we'll try and get onto it as quickly as possible, you're going to hear four 
guitar tones. You're going to hear, what does this sound like with just the inbuilt preamp plugged mm -hmm. straight into our interface? What does this guitar sound like just with a microphone micing it up? In other words, the sort of the, the traditional way of, mic, uh, of uh, amplifying an acoustic guitar. You're going to hear the tone dexter. So you're going to hear the, the preamp out from here into the tone dexter and into the interface. And then you're going to hear the same thing, but using the LR bags. And what we'll also do is a quick sort of condensed version of how you capture a sound that you like in the tone dexter and how you would capture a sound using the iPhone. So. Without further ado, right. actually, what were they hearing for the intro? They would, you were just hearing the, the preamp from the guitar, right? No, I believe so. Yeah, I believe it's okay. just the preamp. So if you see this light on, it's the preamp. If you see this light on, it's the tone dexter. This one here, and if you see this light on, it's the LR bags. And I guess if you don't see any lights on, I don't even know if I can even do this. But we have a the the microphone on its own is plugged in separately, so I'll just have to annotate that on the screen, I guess. Yeah. So here we go, preamp only so, uh, and we've switched the internal mic off i was going to say this the cole clark has got three different kind of sensors on it it's got a bridge sensor a face sensor and a microphone i've turned the microphone completely off the eq is set just straight up the middle and uh, this is what it sounds like so That's beautiful. Right, everybody. We are now going to switch over to hearing one of the Neumann uh, KM184s. KM184s. The reason there are two, by the way, one is just wired into the tone dexter for when we do the, um, the, the, you know, the IR there, and the other is what you're actually hearing. So, uh, Mr. Soundman, please now, can we just hear the microphone on okay. its own? Beautiful. Okay, right. so there you go. There's your, your two basic preamp versus microphone tones. Now we're going to show you uh, how it sounds using the tone dexter. Um, going to go straight into the playing and then what we'll do is we'll show you at the end of the video uh, how we actually make the tone print and same for the voice print when we get to that. So now we're going to hear the tone dexter. All right. And finally, okay. we're going to hear the LR Bags okay. voice print. There we go. Cool. So you've heard the four different um, audio outputs if you like and hopefully you you know you've begun to, to see a difference and you've got a favorite so far yeah. uh, so just very quickly to end this video let's make a, a tone print they even call it a tone print i'm referring it to a tone print but an ir if you like within the tone dexter yeah. so the couple of things that we've got to do here we've got to have a microphone plugged in here and we've got to have some headphones plugged in which we've done yeah um what do we do next then ben right so we need the headphones so we can I can hear the preview as we record it, which is a useful thing you can do on the tone decks that you can't do on the LR bags. Right. So if you hit the, uh, hang on, the left hand foot switch button. Mute, tune and edit. That's it. And then you hit the other button. Boost. Oh, edit train mode. That's okay. It. Then that should, that means that it's waiting for a level from me. So I'm going to play some chords. Uh, you need to just switch the input over to it on the, um, the Lely switcher. I apologize. Okay, that's it. It's taking a level now of my pickup and the microphone. I bet it's got a level. So now it's into the learning mode. If you could press the right hand button again, now I can hear the microphone.
So there we go. I see, so it counted up to nine, didn't it, it giving you... That it takes kind of nine about, slices. About 20, 30 seconds worth of playing for the yeah. learning. Okay. And then, then um, using that right-hand button, you can then... Oh, oh sorry, right-hand button on the tone mm -hmm. deck. So that's it. We can switch between... So we can hear the microphone. In the headphones, this is. This is not very helpful for the video, I know. But <laughs> <laughs> you can have the microphone, press it again, and I can hear the, the pickup on its own. And then if you press it again, I'll hear the tone. So now if you press and hold that button, it will store it into the memory we selected, which is number one. And now, if you unplug the microphone from the back, I'll take these headphones off, and we'll ask... And if we can have some level in the room, level please, in the room, that'd uh, be great. Monsieur Soundman. And then Do with, some minor tweaky blendy yeah, things. Yeah, so the, the notch control knob on the far left mm -hmm. here, it's not actually a notch control anymore. With the latest update of the firmware, they've um, improved it. So it works the same way the bags does, where it will look at the resonant peaks in your tone print and then the more you increase that control it will reduce them so it does have a, a kind of anti-feedback property because it reduces the hot frequencies which are what causes feedback which is great the next two knobs bass and treble adjustment you've got cut or boost i think mm -hmm. it's 15 db i might be wrong there but it's it's plenty um oh, 9 db there we go and then the next knob Mm -hmm. So second from the right, the character knob, I think, is it, what's it called? Character, yeah. Se select. So you've got there, basically, the further you turn it up, the more of the voice print it's going to bring in. So if it's all the way around to the left, it's mainly pick up, and then you get into... Let's have a little... Yeah, so this is... So yeah. Awesome. What, and wave map? What's that? The one? wave map, um, that basically selects your presets. Okay. So you've got, uh, I think it's 22 presets in two awesome. banks of 11. The good thing with the Tone Dexter is if you want to use it for instruments, other acoustic instruments that are not the guitar. So if you want to play double bass through it or fiddle or mandolin, you can upload a different version of the firmware which has different kind of... So clever. It's All right. Well, thank you very much. That was a quick demo of how you did yeah. that. And, and obviously, so if you've got... I don't know, 10 different microphones that you like, you know, you and you like certain microphones on certain guitars and vice versa. Totally, yeah. You can have all your different presets in there and you just can select yeah. the correct one. A day in a recording studio can give you a whole kind of, you know, locker full of nice microphones to use on your acoustic awesome. guitar. So now let's um, get going with the voice print on the LR bags. Uh, and we're going to create a voice print using a, an iPhone. Um, and we should say, uh, <laughs> off the bat here, those naughty people at LR Bags have decided that musicians only use Apple devices. So if you've yeah. got an Android phone, it doesn't work at the moment. Um, no, God! I guess, in fairness, I'm sure they're working on that. Perhaps you might want to check the LR Bags website. No, God, please, no! No! Yeah, uh, for an up-to-date thing. But today, if you're not using iOS, uh, you're obviously not a proper musician. No! No, uh, so. which, yeah, uh, which <laughs> I am not, because I, <laughs> I only have an Android phone. But anyway, we've borrowed uh, Pete's iPhone to use this, so this is good. So to create a voice print, um, you use the app like this. So we press the Create New Voice Print button and uh, go through the steps that it talks you through or shows you through. Now, start. Start step two. Okay, start step three, individual notes. Scales. Scales? <laughs> and then once it's finished doing that, it processes your uh, voice print. We don't print know any scales. For <laughs> you can just play individual notes 
But you should know Excuse. scales. That's I mean, you... okay then. So it's saved the voice print. We've named it CC because it's a Carl Clark guitar. And um, there we go. So this is the this is the voice print, and I'll press the bypass button on the app so you can hear the difference. It's bypassed. And we're back in. So once you've got your voice print, you can then hit the voice print EQ button on the app. And that brings you into this parametric EQ, which if you're, you know, if you're used to using particularly EQs you find in doors and stuff, it's exactly the same as that. You've got a high pass frequency filter in there, so if you want to make it kind of you want to make it sound really bad, you can do that very easily. So that's useful. And then you've got just kind of drag, it works the same way you'd expect. And then once you've uh, once you've done it, you can save as and you can save it to the pedal or to your phone library or both. I'm just going to save this to the pedal and it's called CC1B, we'll call it. Hit save. You've got all of these memories you could use. And um, there we go. I'm going to replace that preset and it's done. So that is how you create the, tone, the voice print on this uh, on the Tone Dexter. I mean, well, sorry, in the voice print DI and the Tone Dexter. Right. All right. So I guess you guys have probably already started to form opinions of what you liked or didn't like. Uh, just as a quick recap, um, let's just do a couple of G chordy right. strummies. Uh, this okay. is the DI. Yep. Okay. Now here is just the microphone. Okay. Now the Tone Dexter. All right. And finally, the LR Bags voice print. All right. And Mr. Ben. Yeah. Um, My conclusion? Yes. I mean, they both, they both, you know, do a job. They both kind of do the same job for roughly the same price, except <laughs> the Tone Dexter has more has more things available on it that I think are useful and make it a bit more practical. Yeah. Especially as I don't own an iPhone. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. I do like the fact that on the Tone Dex that you've got knobs for bass treble, feedback reduction, all that stuff. I mean, there is an anti-feedback knob on the, on the voice print as well. Um, the Tone Dex has a built-in tuner, which is helpful. It also has a built-in boost button, which is useful. The voice print's very reliant on the on the phone, isn't it, for anything other than just recalling a preset? Yeah, like you, if if you don't have a phone, an iPhone, you you can't use it. Yeah. And can you, I can I be uh, mm. you know again? Now I wasn't playing there. Yeah. So obviously I'm not, I can't comment on the feel or anything like that. Yeah. As a, let's just assume I'm in the audience. And, and again, and we're of course assuming it doesn't really matter how good you thought just the mic'd up sound was, because we're assuming that you just can't use that in most gigging yeah, yeah. situations, right? So what we're really comparing is the, the DI'd sound of this to the Tone Dexter to the, to the voice print. I thought just the DI sound sounded fine. <laughs> if you'd have literally just gone, here you go, A, B, C, and I didn't tell you what anything was happening, I don't think I'd be going, oh my God, yeah, two of them sounded way better than that other one. It's The thing I find with these kind of products is that they're, they're really for the player rather than the audience, if that makes sense. Mm. And I'm sure that's not how they'd market it. But, you know, for <laughs> me, I, I play a lot of acoustic guitar, but when I play acoustic guitar, I generally am just playing it as an acoustic guitar. I'm not plugged into anything. If I'm rehearsing with a full band, I might be plugged in. But generally speaking, I've just got it unplugged as a you know wooden box with strings yeah. on it. The thing I don't like about going to a gig with some pickup systems, particularly. I mean, and to be fair, this is a good pickup I, system. I wonder if we've I wonder if we've done the wrong thing here in the sense of should we have got an absolutely heinously bad heinously is that even a word <laughs> heinously I don't know bad. God, I think the Cole Clark's got a even though we turned the mic off. Yeah. Just the the body sense and the piazza in there are still I think quite a nice sound sounding yeah. system and I absolutely I know if you you know if you go for something like a Yamaha APX5 incredibly popular super affordable electroacoustic yeah. guitar 
dreadful sounding plugged in. Yeah. But then who would spend £200 on an electroacoustic and then £500 on a pedal? You would, just wouldn't do that, would but you? But then a lot of... A lot of very high-end guitars come with pickups that I personally find mm. quite unsatisfactory. No, you, you, that's fair. If you've got, I mean, I think it's quite an interesting, a lot of old Martins, or not, mm. not even old Martins, but, you know, I don't know, 10, 15 year mm. old, still had relatively rudimentary, just little Fishman undersaddle yeah. pickups that didn't sound that great, didn't they? That's the thing. Mm. And, and what I've found in the past, and it's why I'm, I'm like, my guitars, I'm really fussy about pickups, because... If you're used to playing it and it sounds acoustic and then you take it to a gig and you plug in and it sounds entirely different because mm. of the crappy pickup system you've got. That's, you know, that, well, that spoils, spoils the playing for me. And one of what these do is they do bring the sound closer to that of a mic type. Yeah. Thing. They're not, you know, it's not going to sound as good as sticking a Neumann in front of your guitar. But it's, so, uh, you know. I think we have a winner. I think, we, I think you I know, think so. gen, generally speaking, Ben's preference is Tone Dexter, which is fine. Of course, if you don't have microphones and, you know, of course, there's additional expense with all this kind of stuff, but you do have an iPhone, that probably does shift the price offering of the LR bags, um, you know, gives, makes that a little bit more attractive. Yeah. Um, but yes, and, and, and I think what we're really saying again is, you, you know, you, you probably have got to be a fairly professional player and you're, you're you know, pedals like this, you're looking for those three or four percent marginal gains, aren't yeah. you? Rather than, you know, like some yeah, massive, yeah. massive difference to your tone. And it does, and it does take a bit of experimentation mm. with like positioning of the microphone or, or the phone, um, you know, to, to get a really good, you know, impulse response. It does take a lot, you know, a, a relative, relatively high amount of messing about. But I think it's quite telling that a lot of bluegrass guys use the tone dexter mm. and those you know they're so picky about acoustic sounds all right well look thank you everybody for watching i hope that's been helpful to you um and uh, yes we'll see you again in another video could be ben doing acoustic parody so it could be me pete or anybody else doing electric guitars might even be lee or nathan doing bass videos but hey please like and subscribe to this channel and we shall keep you informed with everything that's new and exciting in the world of guitar um Thanks for watching. See you, See you next time. time.